It is time to share with you guys another fig variety. That's up next. everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and it is the beginning of November here in 2021. If you guys have been following us along, you know that we have over 170 fruit trees here on the farm, including several varieties of figs that we are growing out here in the Arizona desert. Before I begin, I'm gonna go ahead and link the series here where we discuss figs specifically. We've got a few different varieties in there, one of which you'll be seeing today, and one of which we have not talked about before. What you see behind me here is our Violet de Bordeaux fig. So this will give you a better shot of the tree. Now, this tree we planted one year ago. In fact, it was almost a year ago to the date. When we planted it, the tree was about this tall. It had two branches on it, and that's it. You can see in one year's time, so one full growing season, what this tree has turned into. I'm gonna say this tree is probably about five feet tall. I'm just under six feet tall. And it's probably a good four to five feet wide. So in a single growing season, this Violet de Bordeaux has gone from a one foot stick in the ground to this beautiful tree that you see here. So one of the things with this particular variety is it is kind of known for its more compact growth habit. You can see how it's growing nice and vertical. Some of our fig trees will leave as a single trunk, but for the most part, we allow them to bush out. And that's what we're gonna be encouraging this tree to do when we come back to prune it. But what I really wanna show you is the incredible fruit set that we have on this tree after one year in the ground. So you can see there is a tremendous amount of fruit on this tree. Now we've been taking a small harvest off of this for the last week or two. So this variety is gonna be ripening for you here in the fall, in Arizona at least. Sometime in late October is my best estimate. Now what I like about figs is you can see the successive ripening just in the way these figs look here. You can see we have several figs here that are growing in that are not even close to ripe. And then as we go further down on this branch, you can see we have one here that's close. Now on your figs, you'll see that even though this looks like it's ripe, the fact that it's still kind of pointing straight out from the tree and kind of perky, that tells me that this is not quite fully ripe. You probably could go ahead and harvest this particular fruit, but we're gonna leave this for another day or two. We'll cover it with an organza bag just to make sure we don't have any bird damage. We've got a couple in here that are just a couple days away from being ripe. And then as we go further up this tree, we have figs that won't be ripe for another week or two. So as usual with figs, what's wonderful is that successive ripening, they're not all ripe at the same time, which, you know, if you're a commercial orchard, maybe that's a problem. But for most of us that just want them for ourselves, not a problem at all. So you guys know for figs, we like to use organza bags. We have these in our Amazon shop. Um, these are little bags that have just a drawstring on them. I wanna say these are the two inch by three inch, maybe they're the three inch by four inch uh, organza bag. They work really good. You just put them over the fruit, do use the drawstring and it keeps the birds away. So now the fruit that we're gonna be picking today is right here. You can see it's actually starting to droop just a little bit. That'll kind of give you an idea. So we know that it's ripening. Now it can probably use another day or so, but it's definitely gonna be ripe. You can see we're also starting to get a little bit of wrinkling on there, which again tells you that those sugars are condensing and it's starting to ripen up quite a bit. Soft to the touch as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this. And when you're picking these fruit, you do wanna to try to maintain the stem as best you can right there, and then kind of pull down against it just like that. So now I'm gonna see if I can find another fruit that's close, that's not quite as ripe, and we'll get an idea of what they look like when they're not fully ripe. These are our figs. So these definitely on the small side as far as figs are concerned. 
In fact, as a test, what I want to do is grab a brown turkey from that tree there so we get an idea of the size difference. Okay, so we have our kind of fig size test here. This is a typical brown turkey fig. It might even be a little on the small side. And this right here is a fully ripe Violet de Bordeaux. So you can see quite a big size difference here. I'm not gonna weigh these. There's channels that do that. We don't need to do that here, but it'll give you an idea as far as size. And also something else. So here's a golf ball, and this will give you an idea of the size of a brown turkey maybe a little bit bigger than a golf ball, and then the size of the Violet de Bardot. And it's probably closer to, oh, I'm guessing about a nickel in diameter and quite a bit smaller. So now as far as taste, I'm going to go ahead and open up the brown turkey, which I've had before. Let's go ahead and open this. Now this fig, we've noted, found that the brown turkeys in the fall have a tendency to not ripen quite as well. So in the spring season, these are a lot softer. Um, there's a lot more sugar content. This one hasn't had a chance to build up on it, but it'll give you an idea of what it looks like. Pretty common as far as what a fig color is. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the Violet de Bordeaux. I'm gonna take the unripe fig first. You can see the difference there comparing those two. And then we're gonna take the ripe Violet de Bordeaux, just split it down the middle. Oh yeah. So here's the one that's not quite as ripe. And then the brown turkey. Give you an idea. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of taste test between the brown turkey and the Violet de Bardot. All right, so it's good. Kind of your regular figgy flavor. Not as strong as the spring set, so the Breba crop tends to be a little sweeter and a little bit more juice to it, but not bad. Kind of a common fig flavor. I would say a little bit of a berry kind of flavor to it. Consistency is like a strawberry banana would be the best way to describe that. But it's okay, it's, it's, it's a good fig. Now what I'm gonna do is try the Violet de Bardot that's actually a little underripe. So picking this a little bit early, and let's see what it tastes like. Hmm, okay. Can definitely tell that it's not ripe. Much stronger berry flavor, almost like a strawberry. A little bit on the dry side, and we've been very dry, so I'm not really surprised at that. But yeah, definitely more of a berry flavor to this one. Still, still really good. All right, now the uh, the fully ripe Violet de Bardot. I think I have this split in half because uh, the wonderful camera lady is going to definitely want half of this. So let's see what this uh, fully ripe Violet de Bardot tastes like. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Wow, that is really, really good, you guys. Okay, this is gonna do, every, it's gonna take everything in me to not eat the rest of this. <laughs> wow, very, very good. So the flavors had a chance to really kind of get a lot stronger. It definitely has a strawberry kind of flavor to it. Strawberry is the best way for me to describe it, but a much stronger berry flavor. Very, very sweet. Almost has a hint of honey. It's almost kind of a honey and berry flavor to it. Uh, because it's fully ripe, it's a lot softer. Um, there's also kind of a little bit of a, a little bit dry, of dryness around the eye. One of the things that I like about this variety is the closed eye. So it has almost a, a semi-opened eye, but it's pretty much closed. And while we don't have a lot of ants this time of year on the farm, they're still there. Uh, so it, nice and sealed, also keeps it from getting mold on the inside, which can happen as well. This is a very, very good berry tasting fig. Oh my, so good. So we get questions all the time as far as fig trees, 
how to plant them, where to plant them, sun exposure, all those types of things. Now, figs need full, full sun. They do best in blazing sunshine, even here in Arizona. You guys see the growth that we get in our fig trees. A violet de Bardot, which is kind of known for its smaller, more compact nature. It's smaller, more compact than some of the other fruit trees, but planted under the right conditions, it grows really well. And that is the case here in Arizona. Now, that being said, I can tell you this is a smaller tree. It's growing more compact, also more vertical. So there's no question in my mind that this would be a fantastic variety if you were gonna be doing this in a pot. So if you're in some of the lower zones, you know, probably below zone five or so, you might wanna consider putting this in the pot. In fact, I definitely would, just so you can bring it in during the winter time. Now they do need some chill hours, which we do get here in Arizona. That's debatable as far as how much it'll need, but you can see this tree is fruiting just fine for us here. Now the fruit taste was amazing. The size leaves a little bit, as far as I'm concerned, to be desired. I, I do like a larger fig. Now this is a newly planted tree. So we could find that as the tree ages, we are gonna get larger fruit. But for now, that wonderful berry tasting fruit here as we head into the holidays in Arizona, it's kinda hard to beat. So hopefully you guys enjoy the episode today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. We are fruit tree fanatics here. We have over 170 fruit trees on the farm. If you like fruit trees, this is the place for you. We have a dedicated playlist just for all of our fruit trees here on the farm. We talked about the fig one earlier, but we got a couple hundred videos on the fruit trees that we're growing here on the farm and would love to have you as a subscriber. Definitely share the content, that helps us out here. Any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. In our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. And one note, the organza bags that we use to cover our figs are in that Amazon shop. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. Well, that's got me because it looks like I'm not in it. Here, Am I? Here, you can look. I'll stand exactly where you were. Dang. All right, camera lady. <laughs> do I get to taste now? Yes, you do. <laughs> Are you, do, do you have any comments at all? I'm chewing. I want to talk with my mouth full. <laughs> I do that all the time. I know. I'm not like that. <laughs> People give me a hard time about it too. <laughs> yeah, I can really taste like, um, like a berry, like jam or jelly. And kind of that consistency almost with like the seeds inside too. I agree. So, very good.